we were how to start. Please let us be there soon. So we so had to paddle on the right. left over and over. We're Aaron and Brandon. In our newly converted camper van, we are chasing our goal of visiting every national park in the continental United States. Starting in New York, we've made it to the Midwest and are on to park number five, where we had a bit of a canoeing nightmare. Good morning from Walmart parking lot. <laughs> this is our first time staying in a Walmart. Apparently this is a big thing with van life. We are driving up through Wisconsin to Minnesota today to head to Voyagers National Park. We're really planning on the fly. We have our road trip mapped out, but we're doing it as we go, which is kind of cool. We'll figure it out. That's a oh, nice, nice vehicle. That is a nice vehicle. I like that silver. Yeah. Bye. We stopped at a park right near the Lennon Kugel Brewery so Brandon could go for a little run. I'm gonna make us some lunch and I'm trying to figure out what we're doing in Voyagers because as we've said before, it's kind of fun that this road trip is plan as you go, but it is slightly stressful because I'm having to figure out the day before what we're actually gonna be doing. Thankfully, we're going in beautiful national parks, so there's a lot of things already set in place to do. I just have to find out what exactly we'd like to do. If you're someone who knows the national parks pretty well, you might have noticed that we're skipping one. We're basically bypassing it as we drive through Wisconsin into Minnesota. Why, you ask? Isle Royale National Park is in Lake Superior, and unfortunately, due to the pandemic, all ferries are suspended to the island. I looked up other ways to get to the island. Private boats are allowed and seaplane, which we thought seaplane would be a really cool way to get to the national park. However, it was gonna be about 600 plus dollars for one day. We kind of reevaluated and thought this right now not the best time for us to do that financially time wise we are unfortunately going to skip it but it just gives us a reason to come back to this part of the country and see it again good morning from this random town in wisconsin we are at a harvest house at a brewery and it was just a stopover while we are heading up north to voyagers national park Yesterday we stopped by Lining Kugel Brewery, had a tasting, and then drove to Durand Brewing, which is our harvest house. It was a really good stopover, but we need to get going, head up to Voyagers so that we can get a campsite, because they're first come, first serve. Very local vibe. Everybody knew everybody, and we walked in. They could tell we're out-of-towners. We were the out-of-towners from the big city of New York. <laughs> We just arrived at Voyagers National Park. We checked out the visitor center, got some information, got a little confused. <laughs> we're gonna try to figure out what we're actually gonna be able to do tomorrow since Voyagers National Park is mostly just waterways. So you really need to get out onto the water to explore, but we only have the paddle board and they were saying it's big water, which means there could be waves and we're trying to figure things out. <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit right now and we're supposed to be going out on the water for the entire day so I'm warming up with tea right now 
I'm gonna bundle up because I get cold very easily. We just rented a canoe for the day. We're on Cabotogama Lake, which is one of the prime lakes in Voyagers National Park. And we're just gonna take the day to explore and see what we can see, get out on the water, because that's basically what you do in this park. So we've got the whole day. We've, we just have to bring the canoe back before dark. <laughs> Aaron? I really feel like I'm a navigator from the 1800s using a map. So we are heading to Ellsworth Rock Garden, which we have to head east. trying to find Ellsworth. Our plan was to just go to the other side and then kind of hug the coast and we'll probably see a sign eventually. We're trying to decide if what we're seeing in front of us is an island or not. It's a big uh, big debate between us. See, Erin's our cartographer, so she knows she's right, but we're trying to figure out if like this area right here is an island, and if so, then Ellsworth is right behind it. But if not, then we're gonna continue east to the right. That is not an island. So we are heading to the right. The water is getting a bit choppy. The sun is hiding behind clouds and then it gets pretty cold because it's only like 55 degrees maybe out. It's supposed to get up to 63. It really does feel like we're like early explorers because we hardly see anybody else on the water. I don't know if that's because it's early September and the season's kind of over or if it's just such a big lake that you really don't encounter many people. It's just beautiful to be out on the water. I'm so glad we got a canoe because the swells are definitely way too big for our paddleboard. We'd be freaking out. We wouldn't have made it far at all. We've got lunch packed and the day to explore. We are arriving to what we think is the rock garden. We just passed the campsite and then it looks like there's a pretty big dock over here. So we're gonna assume that this is the rock garden. We're gonna dock, have some lunch. There's our trusty steed, and we're gonna go check out the site. For 20 years, Jack Ellsworth made his cabin on the lake into a bit of a local's destination as a rock garden. Planting thousands of flowers and sculpting pieces of art out of rocks, this once summer house is now a part of Voyagers National Park. Oh, I did not see this snake. It came out of nowhere. Aaron, where are you? And I just saw a snake, which is definitely a type of animal that I'm afraid of that Aaron's not. So I was calling for her because she was nowhere to be found. I was trying I'm to enjoying. film something and I just hear a slithering it was like a three foot yellow and black snake. Cool. It was cool once I realized I wasn't in danger, but it freaked me out. You weren't Hi. anywhere near. I love you. I was in danger. I feel like this is one of those spots where it's really cool on its own and then compound it with the fact that you can only get here by the water. Like there's no roads to get you here. It just makes it that much cooler that you can find this. Saying that we're gonna go to every national park in the continental United States is a huge task and it's a big goal. I think it's really cool that we are chasing this specific goal because we never would have come to this national park. It's so far up north, it's basically in Canada, we've never really heard other people talk about it before. So the fact that we have this goal is making us step out of our comfort zone, do things we normally wouldn't have done, and write down a list of places that we wanna come back to. So we just met an older fisherman who is here on a little lunch break, 
and he was saying to his buddies, these are from bear claws. So I asked, he said when he was a teenager in the 60s, he used to bring groceries to the couple who lived on this part of the island and who built all of these sculptures. And when he was building this cabin, he would put some sort of linseed oil finish on the cabin. And during that time of the year, the bears didn't have much to eat. So the bear could smell the oil and the bear thought it was food. So the next day, Jack, the owner, woke up and saw all of these claw marks on his brand new cabin because the bear was so hungry that it was just needed something to eat. One, that's crazy. And two, the fact that we just met a man who, when it, he was a teenager, knew the couple whose legacy this is, like, wow. Small world in Minnesota. You can like literally see the claw marks. And now that we know there are bears on this island, we're definitely getting off. Aaron runs away. garden we felt like adventurers we were riding with the current it was a beautiful morning now we are riding against the current the wind has picked up I finally had a millisecond to grab the camera paddling like absolute crazy the second one of us would stop it would feel like we were about to tip over because the current was just working against us. We kind of see the end, but we also don't. So it just feels like one of those mirages that you never know when you're gonna get to the end because it keeps growing further and further away. Good God, please let us be there soon. Okay, bye. Let me hold this. <laughs> oh, it feels good to be warm. Oh my God. We are ready to explain kind of what happened with the canoe on the way home. We were, how to start. We had such a great morning. It felt like we were exploring. Things were going really good. We went to the rock garden, had a great lunch, walked around, and then we started coming back. I feel like the current was really strong. Yes. So we were already really struggling to get out of this channel. Once we got out of the channel, we hit big waves. It felt like we were in the middle of the ocean and that sounds dramatic, but this lake is so big that they, they could have been like middle of the ocean kind of swells. It was terrifying. And like there was points where we very well could have tipped over if we were beginner canoers or kayakers, whatever, this might've gone really badly. Honestly, downright dangerous at points. My arms hurt so much right now because we had to continue paddling. We could not for a second just stop and rest because if we did, even if one of us stopped to rest, we would have capsized or we would have gotten off course. I was losing my mind. I, I was almost crying. That's we, so hard. I mean, we paddled as hard as we could for over two hours. It was two and a half hours it took us to get from our lunch spot back on one side because the current was coming in from one way so we so had to paddle on the left, left over and over. It's like ah! <laughs> it was so crazy. Yeah. I won't be going on a canoe for a long time. Every single stroke of the paddle over and over and each one is a battle. Your body is killing. You just want to get closer. Then you look at landmarks and since you've got the current coming against you, you're pushing so hard and you're like barely moving. Yeah. <laughs> we tried to film at points. Maybe Aaron filmed a little bit. You gotta get this over with. Good job, babe. 
Anyway, so. if you come to Voyagers, I still do suggest you get out on the water. 100%. You have to get out on the water. That's the only way you can really see the park. Basically, the trails are on the water, which is so cool. And I feel like there are very few parks like that. So I'm really happy that we got out on a canoe. Tomorrow, we are driving nine hours to Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota, which should be really cool. I've never been in North Dakota. I don't even actually know a lot of people who've been to North Dakota. We're signing off for tonight. We're both very tired. We just want to watch something and probably sleep better than we have in a really long time. <laughs> Proudy. I love you. Oh, whoa, whoa. you know you're in the middle of nowhere when instead of just closing one lane of a road to do road work, they just close the whole thing. So we've been dealing with this, like they're doing a lot of different sections at the same time. And now we get to a point and they say the bridge is out. They just took down the bridge. We already gave up on having the perfect van life, Instagram picture dinners. We are eating out of the pan and a bowl. I have not given up. Brandon does the dishes, so he has given up. He doesn't want to clean any extra bowls and he doesn't have to, so he eats out of the pan now, apparently and I eat out of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to clean more than I have to. <laughs>